The color portable gaming beast that is the Atari Lynx was released in the US in 1989 for $180. It was the first handheld with a color backlit LCD display with 160 by 102 pixel resolution. It went head to head against Nintendo's monochrome Game Boy and later took on the Sega's Game Gear and NEC's Turbo Express. It released a total of 71 games all the way through to 995 before being discontinued a year later. It sold 500,000 units in its first year alone but total lifetime sales are unconfirmed at around 2 million. For comparison its main rival the Game Boy sold 16 million units by 1995. It was therefore considered a bit of a flop in comparison but with all that said is it a system worth collecting for in 2020? I have here a Model 2 Lynx that I picked up back in 2002 when Electronics Boutique sold retro gear. I thankfully have an AC adapter as this thing chews through 6 AA batteries within 4 to 5 hours eBay prices in Australia for a used one currently run around 100 bucks, though to a bit more when sold with games or boxes etc. For comparison you can see here that it's roughly the same width and height as a Switch, although about 3 to 4 times fatter. It came with a multilingual user manual and I have both a handful of loose game cartridges and a small number of box games in my small collection. According to Wiki, there were three types of design for the cartridges before they finalized on this version with the curved lip. The initial ones were flat, the second version had tabs, and then this one was the easiest to insert and remove from the system. The Model 1 Lynx had you inserting the cartridge inside a removable compartment, whilst for this one they just slide in the top. Games for the Lynx came in these cardboard boxes, generally contained a user manual, sometimes a warranty card, and obviously the cartridge. Similar to NES boxes of the era, they tend to get a bit battered and most of mine are in a well-worn state. They do look pretty cool to me though and most have that awesome late 80s, early 90s art style. However, in particular, check out this reversible poster slash instruction manual for my copy of Ishido. Now that is pretty cool. Prices on the used market don't seem too bad really compared to other systems although they aren't exactly cheap as chips. On the bay it's between 30 bucks and 90 bucks shipped though I reckon you could get them way cheaper if you found that at a garage sale or Facebook marketplace once this global pandemic is over obviously. From research it looks like there was a Lynx flashcard that was available a couple of years ago and could be purchased though it's not always in stock so that's something you'd have to look at with the Retro HQ guys. But my biggest issue with the system is the active passive matrix screen which makes it a little tricky to see. It's best in a dark room though you do have a brightness adjuster on the top next to the other knobs and dials for volume, headphones and multiplayer link but it's just not the best. This is a shame as the games aren't that bad and some are still very playable today with some good classic arcade conversions released on the system. Now there are screen mods that you can do if you're technically inclined. The first one was the McWheel mod which the parts can be a bit expensive to get especially for me in Australia. I found an Aussie company that was willing to do it for me for $350 which is a bit too rich for my tastes. Last year a cheaper mod approach called the Ben Ven mod was introduced but that's also a little more work than I wish to do at this point. Thankfully the Lynx has been well emulated for a while and can let you try out the games for free. Free. The handy emulator core does a great job and can be used on multiple operating systems. By the way, handy was the original name before it was renamed the Lynx. Here you can see I have it set up on my Mac using OpenMU and it runs very nicely indeed. The images are much clearer compared to the original screen, though as I'm a bit of a CRT lover, I have put on the CRT filter just to play around with having scan lines on these games. I have also set up RetroArch on my Android GPD XD with the handy core installed and the games also run effortlessly there. And I'm very happy with having access to the full game library on the go and wholeheartedly recommend this path if you so wish. So bottom line, is it worth collecting for in my opinion in 2020? Well, like most other gaming platforms, you either collect because you have a burning nostalgia for the system or you collect purely for interest in the technology of the time. I personally think that the Lynx is a nice system to collect for if it's at the right price. There isn't a huge library so you may be able to get a full set of games. Getting all games boxed in good condition though may cost you some coin. 
For me, I am glad I bought this back in 2002 and can have the original hardware, but I don't have deep emotional ties to it, so exploring the games via emulation every now and again is probably the extent to which I will go. But if I find loose cartridges going for five bucks each at a garage sale, then I doubt I'd be able to say no. All in all, it's a great piece of electronics history and it's staggering to see the leaps and bounds we have now gotten to. Comparing Gauntlet on the Lynx to Skyrim or The Witcher 3 on the Switch is truly mind-blowing. Anyway, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. We are living in some uncertain times at the moment, and I hope you found this video interesting. If you have memories of the links yourself, then please pop them into the comments, as I was a Game Boy fan back in my preschool days. As always, hope to catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.